Think Bigger podcast, Community Conversations, which is with today. Oh, do I say my name? <laughs> yes, you do. Nalani Watley. Okay, so you guys, <laughs> Nalani is a friend of mine for, Nani, how, how many years? Uh, 20? Okay. Now, I actually wanted to touch on that. I actually wanted to touch on that. So um, I know that she is going to be embarrassed to say it, but Nalani, you've never listened to one of these podcast episodes. I haven't. I know you haven't. My bad. It's okay. Um, So I'm a mommy. She's a mommy. We're going to get to that. (laughs) Now, basically what's going on here, Nani, is there is the podcast. Yes. And then there is a branch of it called Community Conversations. Okay. Okay. This is... One of those where community conversations is self-explanatory, right? Mm -hmm. It is a conversation with a member of our community, right? Which is, you know, very far reaching. Okay. But it isn't just learning about someone. It's learning from someone. We all can teach each other something. All of our life experiences and stories are beneficial to all of us, right? So that's what community conversations is all about. Okay. It's learning uh, about someone and learning from someone. Got it. Okay. So we have been friends for something like 20 years. Yes. And actually on the way over here right now, mm-hmm. that whole route. You remember. Okay. And I hadn't come this way. I don't really head out to this yes. area. That route totally blew my mind. I'm sure. Yeah. All of that because, you know, you turned left just yes. a little earlier and yeah. I saw it all because I haven't been over there for years. Yeah. Okay. So you guys, what I'm talking about is where uh, Nalani and her husband, John, live is a hop, skip and a jump from where her mother's house is. Yeah. And I, I honestly didn't even know that until right now. Yeah. Right. So I used to go to her mother's house for Thanksgiving, yes. for a pretty decent amount of Thanksgivings in a row. Right. And that route right now on the way over here tripped me <laughs> out because all of it came back. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I would just make a left right here. Yeah. But instead, my maps app is telling me just two streets forward. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, wow. So, so how do I know Nalani and her husband, John? Now, that story, I think, is super cool, right? <laughs> Do you remember this? I vaguely remember. I think it's we met at California Speedway. Yes. Well, it was called California Speedway. Yes. When they would do the drag strip, and it was located on a different section. Yeah, it was like the, the way, parking lot. Yes, of where it is now with Auto Club Dragway. Yes. But you were, I think, in your blue hat. <laughs> yes. Trying to think you're all cool. It was fun. <laughs> That's what we did. Everyone drag yeah, race. You would drive there in your daily. You would load up your slicks. We would drive there, wait in line yeah. for hours and hours to take one pass. Yeah. Hopefully it's 13 seconds or less. <laughs> and you got to wear a helmet. Yeah, to wear a helmet. And then you would hang out with friends and it was awesome. It was like a, it was a good time. Okay. It was a good time. Do you remember what year that was? I'm guessing 98, 99, 2000. Okay, so I feel, like, I feel like it had to have been more 2000. Probably. You guys, so we're talking about um, before it was the Auto Club Speedway. Mm-hmm. It was the California Speedway, Speedway, right? Right. And was it the opening day? I don't know if it was opening day, but I do know that back then we didn't have a lot of track days. Yeah. Mona wasn't racing as much. California Speedway had just opened up. Their quarter mile track, which was a big deal. Oh, yeah. I think it was before Fast and Furious came out. So it was our <sighs> hardcore racers before that whole, you know, movie came out and yeah. more people jumped on it. But um, I, I would say you're probably, it's probably like 1999, 2000, because I got my car in 97. I got mine this, I could, if I remember correctly, it was the summer of 99. Yeah. So it had to have been 2000 then. And I think. I think I had already had my motor swap in there, so I had the B16 in it. So I would say probably 99, 2000. Okay. It had to have been. So my memory uh, is, is getting shot. Because we're old. Because, yes, we are. <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is, is you guys, like, I am uh, staging. Yes. We were, we're, we're staged. Like she was just saying, for the line was long. Yes. And I think when you enter the speedway, it was on the left side. And it they is. pretty much just set up cones. Right. And it was just the parking lot. Yeah, you, you staged in the parking lot. And then the straightaway is now a parking lot. Yes. But it would be all to the left of when you enter right, 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 the right. club. Right, 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 right. I totally remember that. Yes. And so I'm, uh, I had a blue hatch. Was it blue at this time? Yes. Okay. So when I first got it, it was red. And then the first thing... 
uh, well, not the first thing, but the when I ended up doing a color change, I changed it to blue. And I, I just like everyone else, you know, all over, but especially in SoCal, drag racing. Mm-hmm. Drag racing was the thing. Everyone was into drag racing, and I went to the Speedway that day. I was by myself, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting there in the car, and <laughs> your uh, there was a, a guy with a black EG on R and R's. Yes. And we ended up talking because we're two dudes with EGs, right? That have this, you know, JDM kind of, you know, inclination. <laughs> and, you know, black on black and red R&Rs is, a, you know, pretty much timeless. And um, we, end up be, we end up talking and then I meet his sister. And was John there too? Oh, yeah. Okay. Of course. So it was you three? Yeah. And then at the time we were rolling with... Um Hazardous, Team Hazardous. Okay. So it was like a car club that we had. You guys like, were all there? Yeah, I believe Hazardous was still because we would, that's who my brother was hanging with, and we would go out and play cars with these guys. So I'm pretty sure we were all there. Um, okay, because, yeah, it's, you know what's funny is my memory, I don't have any memory of anyone else. I mean, there was I mean, we probably, hundreds of people yeah, there. Yeah, but. but I think um, I remember my brother bringing you over. Yeah, and, and, I, like, and talking, I met you guys. Uh-huh. Yeah, talking, and then. <clears throat> You just never left. <laughs> so for like, so basically, you know, you know, as I said, guys, you know, we're both getting a little bit older. And I think the, the meat and potatoes of the memories <laughs> is, is what has stuck and everything else is gone. But I, I met her brother, Black EG. You know, he's like, hey, we're EG brothers. Yeah. And then, hey, come over and meet my sister and her boyfriend. And we might have been the rest of the team. I don't remember that yeah. part. But we end up talking. Mm-hmm. And um, we... Be, uh, we became friends. Yep. And then it turned into you and I becoming friends because I was friends with your brother. Right. And, and I would come over to um, to spend Thanksgiving with you yep. guys, sometimes weekends or whatever. Yep. And, uh, you know, it became uh, – uh, these people became like staples in my life, right? And it's just how – it's just amazing how essentially, uh, you know, 18, 19 years later. Right. Here we are. You're a guest on the podcast, <laughs> right? Which is like, who would have thought? I know. Right? right. But the thing about it is, is 19 years ago, you have this girl and her group and her brother and her boyfriend who are into cars. Yeah. And 19 years later, married two children. Yes. I mean, moved all over the place. Yeah. Different things happen. And yet, right now, you have. What is sitting in the garage? The CRX. The CRX that you've had for how long? Uh, 20 plus years. So it that was, my that, first that was the same car when I yeah. met you in yes. the staging lanes yes. at so, the track. So the story with the CRX is actually really interesting. Um, I graduated from high school in 96, which is probably when a lot of your listeners were probably born. There are going to be some <laughs> that were born in the mid-90s. But yes. yeah, so I left um, high school and I graduated in 96. I went to San Diego State. And I went without a car. Yeah. Had my license. Didn't need a car at the time. Uh, when I decided to move into a ho- um, an apartment, yeah. my dad said, if you got a job, I'll get you a car. Okay. And so my brother was working at golf and stuff and said, I got uh-huh. you a job. So he got me a job. And I told my dad a week later. And he says, already you got a job? I said, yeah, let's go get a car. Mm-hmm. So we found, I always knew I wanted a CRX. Yeah. Um, he wanted to give me his Toyota Camry. Yeah. And I thought, you can't do anything with that. Like, John's driving an Integra. Yeah. Michael's driving a hatch. Yeah. Like, Michael, I'm a hey, Camry. by the way, Michael is her brother's day, not me. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry, my yeah. bad. Um, and so um, we found a CRX in Costa Mesa. Uh, John and I drove out, met my dad out there. Um, and the funny story is there was another girl looking at it. At the same time? The like same you guys time. got there and she's there? Yeah. So we started looking first. No, she started looking first. Then I jumped in. Yeah. And I noticed, I don't know what happens, but I got very possessive and I said, I want the car. And my dad's like, are you sure? And I said, yes. Yeah. So he went in and said, we'll take it. Had you even driven it yet? No. Had you walked I around just, it? I mean, yeah, but I was like, I'm not letting... <laughs> <laughs> not letting this bitch take That's my car. That's kind story. of how it came out. I did not know And so, that. yeah, and so I told my dad, I want it. And he goes, okay, fine. So he goes and he says, we'll take it. And right after that, the mom went in and told the deal, the sales guy, we'll take it. And they said, sorry, we sold we, it. We already verbally agreed. And, of course, agreed. she looked all upset. And I was like, yeah, That's right. Yeah. So, but... <laughs> I didn't know how to drive stick yet. So John had to drive it home, which sure. sucked. Sure. Sitting in the passenger side. Yeah. But um, I learned incredibly quickly mm-hmm. and started driving it. 
So that's how I got this. So the CRX is my first car ever that my dad bought me. And um, so there's that sentimental. Value. I've had it. Yeah, I've had it since it's the very first car I ever had. OK, so um, <clears throat> let's I want to kind of backtrack a little bit. Right. So you bought the car in Costa Mesa. Mm-hmm. You had moved down to San Diego. Yeah. So at the San time, Diego State, but, but where did you grow up? Um, L.A. OK, L.A. And then family moved to Whittier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, and from there, high school, then San Diego, then San Diego. Okay, yeah. Then so, found the car in Costa Mesa. Yeah. So found the car. So I came home for the summer. Yeah. Um, because I had moved out of the dorms, came home for the summer, knew I needed a car because I was going into an apartment the next year. Yeah. So I needed some time, some some way of getting around. Mm-hmm. And so I got the CRX. Yeah. So loaded up my little CRX, went down to San Diego. Um, then you realize that. When you are going to school and you have financial aid, yeah. they give you just a fat check, which is basically a loan, and you buy what you need, and then you realize, gosh, I have so much more money. Why wouldn't I just do a motor swap? And uh-huh. that's how I got into it. Uh-huh. So, John. So, Sally yes, May. That's how it's Sally, came out. <laughs> For those of you that know about Sally May, <laughs> Sally May is how you made it happen. Yeah, so I, I used my financial aid. <laughs> To get my motor swap, which is horrible, but that's just how that's just how we got in it. And so bought a B sixteen, yeah, JDM, which was super exciting at the time, yeah, incredibly rare, and had that motor swap put in, and then I just got hooked, and yeah. I just was like the power and hanging out with the friends, and you know John was there, and my brother was there, and that was the big thing. Is everyone always asks me like, how did you get involved with racing? And it was just I was so infatuated or in love with John. And he and my brother were really close, and they were doing all these car things, and I was not. And you wanted to go. And so I thought, well, if I wanted to hang out with them, then I should go with them. And then I just got hooked. Yeah. And I remember um, seeing Lisa Kubo for the first time. She was the only female racing at the time. Uh huh. uh -huh. And I remember just thinking, like, holy mokes, like, she's doing it. Yeah. And she's doing it well. Yes. So um, I just started getting in it and then I started hanging out with them more and we went out to you know meets and street races yeah. and just all that stuff and we were meeting people people that I enjoyed hanging out with yeah. and they became family yeah like you and so um it just stuck and we just kept going so we started racing at um LACR down at Palmdale yeah, yeah. with Battle of the Imports IDRC all of those events and then I started winning yeah um bracket racing which at that time bracket racing there were tons of cars so you really had to work through the ladder to get through yeah and i raced out at palmdale i think it was the last idrc event yeah and i remember it was super cold it was like in september i think and i was just consistently running and i kept advancing and advancing and i remember um racing nobody was in the stands Except for a couple of zero four racing guys. Yeah. So Mike and all those guys. Skinhead Mike. Yes. So for those of you guys in <clears throat> SoCal, you're going to immediately know who Skinhead Mike is. <laughs> for those of you across the world and in other states, uh, it is not a... That is not a racist guy yeah, named Mike. No. That's, we don't call him Skinhead because he's a skinhead with a capital S. No. We call, we call him Skinhead Mike because... Well, we call him Mike now. We've, we've all grown, so we don't Fair refer enough. to him as Fair that, enough. but... Um, but that was his several, nickname for, yeah, for forever. For, for a long time. And I think some people might know him um, as Mike on um, MTV's event. What was MTV's show? Um, I'm so mad that that Life of a drag, Life of a Street Racer, something like that. True Life? True Life. I'm a street racer. Yes, I love that you know that. I'm mad that I still know <laughs> that. You guys, that's... So everyone who was on that episode, yes. we know and it's great because they're like family now. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I remember doing Palmdale, and every time I would pass the finish line and I come up the return road, there's Mike and all of Zero Four Racing just cheering on, cheering sure, me on, sure. which was so incredibly humbling and supportive. And I mean, these are guys that we've seen around and stuff, but like the fact that they stuck around for so it, it's really touched us and. Yeah. It stuck with us. That was several years ago. We now have family barbecues together. My yeah. kids play with their kids. Yeah. Like it's nuts how it's really grown through friendship and just from this one thing. Even for us. Yeah, you know what? So that's actually a perfect <clears throat> a perfect part of the story that I want to branch off yeah. of. So, you know, she's talking about how cars got to a point where 20 years later people are are are, are parents mm-hmm. and the kids are playing with each other and that kind of stuff but 
cars have been more than just and we're gonna totally come back to drag racing yeah. but but you know the thing is is that because of all of that it wasn't just aftermarket import cars and racing right it was i mean you ended up making have made careers out of cars yes. so let's talk about that right? <clears throat> right so on a side note when you went down to san diego i think one of the people that you used to hang out with was another dude driving an integra did you guys call him crotch was it Crotch? Yeah, it was Crotch. So Crotch, it w- his name is Chris, but yes. I don't know why we called him Crotch. Because you guys introduced me as to him crotch. as Crotch. Yeah, so Crotch, he was, I don't, he had maybe an old Integra. I know that eventually he went into a coupe. Yeah. Um, which was so sweet. I remember him and what John were friends. That? I'd say probably 2001 or two. Okay. One, two, or three, because I had then graduated and I was still living down there. And at the time, John and Crotch were working together. They went to Virginia. That's right. For several months while I was holding down the fort in San Diego. And I would have to drive his car once a week so that the, the tires wouldn't get, you know, bald. And, Soft spots and yeah, stuff like and that? Yeah, and so I would always be nervous about driving his car. Okay, hold um, on. What, what, <clears throat> at what point did race legal come into play? So I Do worked, I have the timeline about yeah, right Yeah, here? so race legal. So remember, so I got my car in 97. I was down in San Diego, attending San Diego State. And um, racing was like everything for me. I would come sure. home on the weekends. Man, that's what everybody I know. Did. And then stay until Sunday night. We'd go out to the races Sunday night. I'd wake up super early to yeah. jam back to San Diego for my first class. Yes, yes. So that was like my life. <clears throat> and um, I realized that San Diego State was funding... Um, like a project called Race Legal, and they were putting on street, street, legal street races at Qualcomm Stadium. Mm-hmm. So I looked into it. I got a job. So I was working. I don't know because it was racelegal.com. Yeah. right? Yeah, and it was funded through OTS um, and well, tell, the State Office o- of Traffic Safety. It, this so is really this old is, stuff. This is um. So I don't even know if OTS is still around, but that is a, a <clears throat> not federal but state, a state, state a, funded, a state mm-hmm. funded event. Yeah, so it was through state SDSU. Or through, S- through SDSU Foundation, yeah. Mm-hmm, so it's mm-hmm. through. So um, Stephen Bender, who is a professor at San Diego State University, saw that there was this epidemic and a problem because at the time, I mean, I think when I was in my peak at San Diego at a uh, race legal, we had lost ten kids in one summer from so crashes it was from street racing. So you guys, so you're talking about a professor at a you know San Diego State University realizing that. There There's needs to be there needs to be mm-hmm. something done because you know you guys movies and and you know like she referenced you know MTV True Life I'm a street racer. There's a reason why MTV did a show. It's because it was that rampant. Yeah, it was in that peak. And yeah. that you know street racing has been a part of culture. You know I think a lot of the East Coast guys uh, uh, drag racing mm-hmm. and even street racing has been very much a part of life that hasn't really ever tapered. Right. For a lot of people in Southern California, because they shut down a lot of the tracks and because they were crushing cars and people were actually getting shot. Like it started to have a lot of violence and gangs and stuff. I think it was like a trifecta of things that that really like uh, like crushed down and only a few people, right? Like right. you guys, right. you and John, a fat kid, <laughs> you know, zero. A lot yeah, of guys, yeah. they they just kept going. Yeah, and so it we, started to come back a little bit. Yeah, but, you know, but you ended up working for this. This professor wanted to start something because, like you said, ten kids had yeah. died because of street racing right. accidents. Yeah. So basically, what was happening is once I had graduated from college, I wasn't ready to go back home. Mm-hmm. I had some time. For- period where I wasn't sure if I was going to go back into teaching or if I wanted just to take my degree and run. Yeah. And I got involved with Race Legal and I got promoted to like a campus car club director. Okay. So it was a good career jump off and I had, it was the best job. I was hired to go talk to high school students about street racing and it wasn't more like don't street race. It was more like just be educated. Sure. So no... If you're get if you get caught, you're gonna your car will get impounded. It could be taken from you. You'll have fines. All of, of these things. Yeah. And I got some training from San Diego PD because yeah. they were you know educating me about the law, so I could push that out to the yeah. students, which was important. And I was very clear with people. Um, don't think that I'm trying to prevent you because I did it. So I'm not going to tell you not to do it. Sure. But I think you should know what you're getting yourself into should that happen. Mm -hmm. And so I just was out educating people. And at the time, I was driving actually out to Santee High School in my raced out little CRX carbon fiber hood. Yeah. Had Volks on it. So it was white on black. Yeah. Sweet little car. And I got pulled over. Uh Uh-huh. 
So, of course, they had me pop my hood. Uh-huh. And I really tried to play the innocent girl card. Yeah. Like, no, I don't. I'm not sure. Like, I bought the car like this. The guy found out who I was. And he's like, so you know what you have. And I'm like, well, I mean, I guess. And so they sent me to the ref, which sucked. Of course. And I couldn't get out of it. It was at the time John was not in town. He was in Virginia. Uh-huh. So I had to go to court by myself. Never done that before. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so long story short... I decided to pull the car off the street. Okay. And um, that's how I got into full drag. So you so, registered it as non-op? So basically, yeah. So I had a loophole. Can we talk about loopholes? I had sure. a loophole. Yeah. The day that I went to the DMV to tell them I wanted to register it as a non-operational vehicle, their system, the computer system was down. Okay. So they did everything manually. I paid my $10. Yes. Took that receipt from the DMV that said I registered as non-op. Yes. Went to court. Showed that to the judge, and she's like, okay, it's off the street, $10, that's it, you're good. Didn't yes. have to pay a fine, didn't have to go to the ref. About a month later, obviously the systems now work, so they're processing all my paperwork, and they send me an email or a, a letter that says, you can't register this as a non-op, it's not the right chassis, or something along those lines. And so I think I think I try to register as like a dune buggy or something like off-road, Okay. not like a non-operational, like an off-road type of vehicle. And the chassis but that was an innocent mistake? Uh, yeah. So it's a combination of the luck. internet and the computer being down? It was down, totally luck. Right? And you computer, trying to yes, register a yes. dune buggy? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I was trying to get the loophole because yeah. I didn't want I didn't want the ref to take my car apart. Like, of course. I just, and I didn't know how I was going to do it. John wasn't with me. And so yeah. I never experienced any of this on my sure, own. Sure, sure, sure. So it was just... It, it worked out. And I said I would pull the car off the street. So I took it off the street. So yeah. to this day, I still get registration... I mean, if we could produce a smog, we could drive the car on the street. We wouldn't, but... So it's still a VIND car. It's still a VIND car, yes. Okay, interesting, which, yeah. I mean... But now that you have that front end and stuff, I mean, there's yeah, you really... you can't. I mean, people I mean, keep asking me to take it to the grocery store, but no, I just... I'm no, not okay. doing that. <laughs> so for, for those of you guys outside of California or, or just flat out don't even know what any of those, like, acronyms stood for, so the REF is the California yeah. State Referee, and basically... I mean, I'm pretty sure they still do it now, Mm -hmm. but there's a reason why most people aren't driving, whether you want to call them show cars or race cars or any mix of the two. There's a reason why in some places like California, there's less amount of people doing that. And people in other states tend to be like, oh, you guys are a bunch of... They're not crushing your cars. Like they're not... If you're in Timbuktu state and and they pull you over, you might get a ticket. I mean, some states like, look at the guys in Florida. They don't have any laws. Yeah, I've seen like drag cars on the street. Yeah, they do whatever they want. Yeah. Certain states don't have emissions. And so so over here, if you got a ref ticket and you didn't know any, whether it be a loophole or a way to fix it <laughs> or whatever, you're you're pretty much done. Yeah. Because you have to literally return every part of your car back, back to, to stock, stock, but not just emissions. They'll check DOT. Yeah, everything. Like, your head, like if you had JDM headlights on an EG because they were plastic and didn't have the, the nipples, you know, for guidance, for the alignment, mm-hmm. which is part of DOT, your car would fail. Yeah. So let's say you, you changed all your smog equipment and they're like, oh, well, we don't know what these headlights are. You can't right. align the lighting. Fail. Yeah. So people dreaded driving because if you got pulled over and if they told you to pop the hood, you were fucked. Yeah, you were screwed. Well, and and for me too, because my engine was directly from Japan, Yeah, I literally would have had to pull that little baby out. Sure, Find sure. some kind of single cam that fits with, you know, that's within the CRX specs of stock. And, yeah. And I wasn't doing that by myself, yeah. you know, and, and my husband, or at the time John was my boyfriend, he, that fool was in Virginia yeah. with all my, like anybody else that could have helped me was gone. So computers so, being down, dune buggy, know, Milani, yeah. <laughs> right? And and here we are. It worked. 10 it, bucks, no, it, I was out dude, and I got out bucks, of it. 10 bucks, dude. I, so the, you didn't you know, know how many story. times, no, I didn't know that. So you know how many times I got rolled in the amount yeah. of money I had to oh, pay I know. I, I over the last however many years, I mean, one ticket, 700 bucks. Yeah, one yeah. ticket, 500 yeah, bucks. Yeah, I don't miss that at all. But I do, I really do miss driving the CRX um, on the street. You mean street, on like a recurring? Daily, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so I had a CRX too, mm-hmm. a white one. And mine was not the most comfortable anymore. <laughs> because by the time I got it, there was no more heater core. It was a B16 with a Dr. Charles ECU chip of from course, Atomic. Yes. So just, I would rev it to like 9,000. Yeah. I had an autometer monster tag that exploded in my face <laughs> at like, I don't know, eight thousand rpm but i drove mine all the time with the six puck unsprung yeah not comfortable yeah but no, we not. didn't care yeah back then we would have 
you've driven it. it. That was it. Like that I was remember it. when we would be driving. So shortly after the CRX, I got the bug and I got a hatchback. Yeah. So while we were putting the CRX together, I had a little hatchback. I think we put the B16 in there because we were putting the K series into the CRX. So I was cruising around in the B16 and I didn't have AC. Mm -hmm. So when people, when I take friends out or they're like, can you put the air conditioning? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Roll your roll window your down. Windows. There's your AC, honey. <laughs> That was, that was the day. That's how, but that was like That's life. how we did it. That's how we did it. And so um, I remember I was a little bit older at the time and I was babysitting my little brother and sister. No, just my little brother. So he was probably, I'm thinking he might have been six, seven oh, when or when they eight. were like, can you take him somewhere? I took him somewhere and poor kid fell asleep in the back of the car and it drenched. drenched. <laughs> I felt so bad. <laughs> And then I realized, okay, if I want to have kids one day, yeah. this isn't going to work. So eventually, the CRX was up and running. So we got rid of the hatchback, which I, to this day, regret. regret. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because I connected with the guy that I sold the car to try on to Instagram. Get it back? We didn't try to get it back, but he remembers me. And I oh. I remember when we sold, when we signed the pink slip, I was crying. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I'm a girl. I was crying. <laughs> and he asked me, he's like is this your first car? And I'm like, no, <laughs> but I was sad to yeah. see it because yeah. it just becomes so much a part of your life. And I don't know. It's just car people are just weird like that. No, no, you and know I'm what? A chick, it, so. it, it, look, fine. I, I didn't want to <laughs> say it because that would make me a chauvinist, I know, but you said it. So it's good. Yeah. So, so, okay. But, but what I'm saying is, is like you guys, if you hear how we were trying to loop back around to race legal and we're just back into the cars, know, the car that's, that, but that was our lives. Right. Know, yeah. So let's try again. Right. So yes. race legal. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's try to come up with something sanctioned and legal yeah. to, to help kids have a way to race mm -hmm. Qualcomm st uh, stadium Qualcomm. Yep. right over there in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you worked at Race Legal from what time to what time? I would say from 97, 98, somewhere in there, till probably 2002 or three. Okay, and then what happened next? Where did you go next? Um, it was time, I, I needed to go back home. Yeah. So um, I left Race Legal uh, moved back to LA and then I got my job at the LA Auto Show. Right. That's and when that's, straight into that? Yes, yes. Okay. So you guys, LA Auto Show, you know, a lot of people, I think that a lot of the guys listening, mm, if you're a car guy, you, you may not be as familiar with these types of organized car shows. People tend to think of an aftermarket uh, you know, quote unquote, tuner style mm -hmm. car show, which is very much a part of the culture. You know, it's parties, it's models, it's lights and lasers and, and custom cars. But there's also, you know, a, a, a kind of a reminder that I always tell people is as much as we have that thriving aftermarket right. world, then and now, mm -hmm. it still has always comprised such a tiny bubble right. of what the real full all out automotive industry mm -hmm. and culture right mm -hmm. so you have something like the la auto show at the la convention center which is like d world debuts of right. chassis yeah. and, and global manufacturers are bringing concept cars from across the planet right and things like that and it's much more gargantuan than the shows that we have generally been accustomed to right and and it's official and you have you know tv and media and back then it was newspapers and magazines yeah, yeah. and everything so 2000 what three four 2003 la auto show yeah i went to la auto show how did you decide to do the of all the different automotive options why the la auto show from um, race legal so i was looking for a job in la yeah um and at the time well sema still does it but i went on to sema.org and they have mm -hmm. a classified section yeah, yeah so i had applied to skunk 2 mm -hmm. which was really far I had applied at K&N, which mm -hmm. is really far as well. And I applied at LA Auto Show. And I was still in San Diego. Um, I was still working with Race Legal, but I also started dabbling in with Barona Speedway. We had helped open up that track out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was, I was kind of doing a little bit of both because I still needed to make ends meet. And um, LA Auto Show called me for an interview. Yeah. Came up and... Um, I don't know if you know this, but John also applied for the LA Auto Show. Mm -mm, so I don't know that. he didn't tell me. Well, we were both trying to get home. Yeah. So that dude didn't tell me. Totally applies for LA Auto Show. Oh, I, and his girlfriend's like, "Hey, babe, well, I got a call back from the LA Auto I, yeah, Show." Yeah. So he didn't tell me. So I was like, "Hey, I got a, I got a call," and he's like, "Okay." So I went. I had my interview, and then I think after the interview, Scott Webb, who hired me, said, "Hey." 
How do you know John Watley? Because remember, we have different names. Yeah, yeah. But both of our resumes had race legal on there. And that's not... Oh, okay. That can't be, like, coincidental. Sure, sure. So I guess John applied, didn't tell me. Yeah, yeah. I got the job. And well, did so, you guys apply for the same exact yeah. position? <laughs> oh, no. We were both trying to get home. <laughs> but he knew that story. dude knew I had applied. He's so funny. Okay. So when I got the job, the first week when I went in, um, Scott asked me, so do you want to write John's, like... I'm sorry you didn't get the job letter or can I write? I said, no, I think you should write yeah, that. Yeah, you should write it. And so, um, in fact, I think the week I started at LA Auto Show, John and I got engaged that okay. that same week. Okay. So, um, it was a lot of exciting times during that yeah, time. So, um, yeah. But yeah, so he applied also. So, I ended up coming first. I came up like two months before he did. Yeah. Worked at LA Auto Show. And then he followed because he got a job at Hotchkiss. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we stayed. We were we were just an automotive yeah. family. And I mean, I think anything different, I just thought, like, I need to get a job. I need to get paid. And I would love to do something that I love. And, and so that, that's what the LA Auto Show was for me. So I stayed there for about 10, 10 11, 12 years, somewhere Wait, in you there. were there for 10 that plus long? years? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I don't even remember. Yeah. I don't. Even, I just remember that I would go on media day, yeah. and I would say hi to you, and uh-huh. you were busy. But mm-hmm. I, you know, we just hug it out real yep. quick, and and then we'd like, you know, separate, and I would go about, you know, which to this day I still go. I know. Me too. To the LA I'm Auto Show, yeah. I, I still go. Um, fantastic event. Yeah. Fantastic it's a good event. event. Yeah. Um, okay. So, LA Auto Show mm-hmm. for ten years. Mm-hmm. The CRX. Yes. The whole time, it's now off the street. Yeah. Right? When did you go? Okay, well, before we even do that, what was your personal best um, uh, time? And, like, did you – you said you were winning your brackets. Yeah. So, I – so, we put the the B series – we put the B series in the, in the CRX. I pulled the car off the street. Yes. And so, now we started, you know, towing everywhere. Yeah. Which felt so much better than driving. Yeah. And we raced out at Palmdale, won that bracket. I was running, I think, 13s probably. What year was this? Um, nine, oh gosh, maybe 2000. I can't remember. Okay. Um, decided to try our luck in Vegas. Okay. Drove out to Vegas. Yep, Vegas Speedway. Uh-huh. Raced out there, blew the motor. Okay. Um, and at the time, Venom Racing was really big. Yeah. Um, Rado was coming out with his big trailer, yeah. Bergenholz, all those guys. Yep. Lisa Kubo. Yep. Um, Vince Tiaga, all those guys were coming out with big trailers. Yeah, yeah. And I remember coming with my little trailer, but everyone was so nice. Yeah. Venom let me park my trailer next to them so that the, they would have someone watching the car overnight. Uh, blew the car up, and I remember John asking me, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to continue just playing in the bracket race or do you want to go to the next level you know we didn't have kids and i had a job so i was like let's just go to the next level i don't sure, know sure and so we did so we decided to go k mm-hmm. took the car to steam chassis yeah. in long beach and um they put the cage in dude gary steam gary's legit OG, yeah and the, i think i think the crx was his first k series crx okay um because you know it didn't it didn't just bolt up sure you had to you know do some modifications yeah um, and I remember we would go check on the car and I'd play inside like a little monkey because it had all the little bars yep, and everything. Yep. And and because we were funding it ourselves, it just took some time. Of course. You know, we were both now working and we were just funding this little four-wheel baby that we had. Yeah. And um, we finally got it up and running. I say it took us about two years, I think, to do everything. To go from to a go from fun like, bracket mm-hmm. challenge car to... Yeah, to like a pro stock, yeah. like all motor. Yeah. And so our first event was out at Pomona. Um, I, I can't remember what year it was. It had it was one of the last NHRA Sport Compact events. Okay. And I remember rolling in total last minute. I mean, we still had the paper on the Lexon windows because we hadn't pulled those off. Okay. It's like brand spanking new. Yep, yep. New wrap, everything, and um, we still weren't quite ready to run. So we. At the time, NHRA was was supporting Sport Compact, and they would do two-day events. So Mm -hmm. you would do, like, two or three um, qualifying passes, and then... Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. So on Saturday, I remember remember people were kind of surprised to see a K-Series in a CRX. Okay. That was sort of a new thing. Yeah. Everyone was running, like, B-Series. Yeah. So, um... 
we were able to get one hit and I remember thinking it was the last the last pass of the day and this is a really funny story. I had to race Vince Tiaga in the Mazda 3. So he was running with Bergen Holtz. Mm -hmm. And um, thankfully, we knew a lot of people. So we had to push the car up. Usually, you tow up. You yeah. don't drive it. Yeah. Push the car up. Um, nobody knew how to put the seatbelt on me. Like, we just didn't know what we were doing. Total sure. rookie. Yeah. Um, but we were just so excited. And people were so supportive. So um, somebody ended up helping us get the stupid seatbelt on. Yeah. And John told me... When the light turns green, don't cut a light. Let Vince go first. So if something happens, you're by yourself. Okay. And I said, okay, no problem. So I do my burnout, and it sounds amazing. The car yeah. sounds so sick. And John said people were, like, running from the stand, like, running from the back to okay. the stands okay. to the car. And so we do our burnout. Vince does his burnout. And I'm trying to get in the beams, and, I, and it doesn't kick over anymore. So I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to kick it over. And it, it won't start. So Vince gets in the beam and he goes down the track. So I can't, I can't make a pass. But you haven't read lit. No, I haven't. Just, I just, I couldn't you, get. You can't get I the car to start yeah, again. Yeah, so I did my burnout. It sounded awesome. Yeah. And the car died? Like, the car dies. Okay, try to so, start. You're, so you're cranking. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Is well, it it's turning? It's cranking? It's just like, it's trying to, but it's not kicking over. Okay. And so um, they pull me out. And of course, we're kind of like. Okay, get the toe strap. Like, let's toe out. And everyone's like, well, who has the toe strap? So we don't have a toe strap. Yeah. Like, we're just total rookies. Yeah. So we push back. We're at the starting line. We push off. And we push all the way up to... They're all pushing me, a bunch yeah. of my buddies. And we get to our pit. Yeah. And um, we look. And oh. there's no fuel. So we didn't have enough fuel. Because we had a small, like... Yeah, of course. Fuel cell. And you had just run out of and fuel. And we had just run out of fuel. So we obviously didn't make the class yes and um we end up talking to vince after because he was helping us and uh -huh. vince tiaga says it would have been really funny because his plan when we lined up was to let me go first because he wanted to watch me race and john told me let him let go. him go first so yeah. if i would have beamed up if we would have gotten into the, the lane you might have just both we been both would have been sitting there waiting for one of <laughs> each other's to go so to this day, I always ask Vince, like, I really want another crack at it. Can yeah. you li let's line up? And yeah. So, you know, but he's doing great wherever he's in Michigan, I think. So. I see. I see. But yeah, now, so it's just cool really story. funny. And so I do remember telling John, like, okay, so if I would have made my pass yeah. and went to the top end of the track, how would we have gotten back? We're just going to push back. He goes, well, we would have figured it out. Well, and true. so we learned a lot. So every event, I always ask, do we have enough fuel? To this day, yeah. is there fuel? Do we need to refuel? Because I don't want that mistake again. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it's kind of a funny rookie mistake. <laughs> so then that was at Pomona. That's when we raced at Pomona. And then we finally got our shit together. Wait, was I there that day? I'm not sure. I went to watch... I mean, drag racing was the thing. Yeah. And I used to do... Uh, I used to go fairly often. Yeah. And I know I went to watch you a couple times. And I do think I remember a time or two where... Because everyone had to pull out of the, the, the box every once in yeah. a while. Or because something happened. Sure. Whatever, you know. So, um, I don't know. That I'm, had to have been in... Um, I'm thinking... 2000... Three or four, maybe? Yeah. Somewhere in there. I mean, I don't know. I can't really remember right now, but I mean, seeing people burn out, somebody would snap an axle, somebody would blow yeah. a clutch and be like, oh, well, yep. let's just pull right yeah, back yeah, out yeah. of there. Yeah. Didn't even get to run. Yeah, so ours was no fuel. I see. So right after that, somebody got me a, a sticker that says got fuel. There that, you go. Back in the day, it was that whole like got adobo, got rice. That, yeah. So I had got fuel. So that was your um, first, first official event official. with the K. Yes. And you didn't even go down, didn't go down the track. The, the yeah. track. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. And then what What was next? So right after that, we got our shit together. Yeah. Figured out what we needed to do, which was great. Yeah. Um, came together as a team. And so then we went to Palmdale. Yeah. And raced one of the last events for IDRC. Mm -hmm. And that I had my shit together. Yes. So remember, I had my B-series. I was running 13s. Yeah. And so um, now I'm in this K series. Now I, I've got the taste of it. I know what I'm doing. I'm used to being in the car. And so I ran my first um, 12, 11, and 10 second pass all in one event oh. at IDRC. And then I won the event. It was a really exciting oh, thing yeah, for me. Oh, yeah. I'm so, sure. Um, so I ran my first 12. And then, and we just kept trying to, like, you know, I was getting to learn the car. Yeah. And then into the finals, I raced. I can't remember the guy's name, but it was a neon. It was a Dodge neon. Yeah. And um, I, I clicked over a ten point nine nine, and that 
got me the win. And you beat him. I beat him. And that was the last IDRC a event. A Neon, a turbocharged Neon? No, all motor. Back oh. then, it was all still all motor. Okay, so like... I I didn't I don't know anyone who ever had a Dodge Neon <laughs> even back then. Um, I think like um, Sean Carlson I think was also running Dodge Neons and in this the is beginning? like way back in the day. Yeah. Wow, you said Sean Carlson, I know, right? dude! Wow, yeah, that dude's that's legit. triple OG mm-hmm. right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So um, yeah, so like even back then, like you know, I remember Venom was still racing. Um, Eric Del Rosario from like Cookie Graphics was still mm-hmm. in it. Um. Who else was out there? I mean, Maybe I'll, Eric Darby was still racing I mean, in his little RX-7. Yeah, a lot so of people were, It was know? still very much involved. And so I remember I won that event. And then that's when it just started to, um, you know, I started picking up sponsors and people started recognizing who we were. Yeah, and yeah. I think that was the first time I met Darton Sleeves, John yeah. from Darton. I think that might have been the first time that I had met him. Um, and then established a really great relationship and friendship with that guy. Yeah. Uh, and then it just kind of grew. Like, I remember uh, Zero Four Racing was there, and we took a picture. Yeah. And it's really funny because um, there's one guy, Barry, who lines me up for every pass. And um, I met, I think I met him the first time at that event. And um, I remember him hitting me up on MySpace. Okay. That's really MySpace. <laughs> and we have a photo, and he goes, Ken, Ken, he goes, hi, this is Barry. We met. Da, 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 da. And, like, never left him. He's been with the team forever. It's just funny how these memories pop up and you remember like who they were and how you met them yeah. and then now where we are. Yeah. Like we see them frequently and so um but yeah, I mean I think that was a lot of just you know, we met a lot of people and we just maintained friendships with them, you know? You know, th- that's the thing that I think I think is one of the greatest aspects of the car culture mm-hmm. is that you know, it's about community. Right. And you develop friendships. Some people, like even like us, who become more like family. Yeah. You know, and and it's a very beautiful thing because whether it be cars or not, you know, like life is what you make it. Right. And people can be what you allow them to be. Right. And, and there you go. You know, like I feel like I feel like it's a really good example because it goes from. Uh, street racing and we're just children adolescent juveniles uh you know whether it be magazines Mm -hmm. right so okay so speaking of magazines right (laughs) yeah what was your stint at d sport magazine so um i eventually where was that from race legal la auto show where was d sport race legal then la auto show and then i it was time to move on from la auto yes so i went to d sport yes so i was at d sport for like a year? Less than a year. Okay. Maybe a year. Uh-huh. Somewhere around there. Um, and it's funny that you bring that up because then I became super close with Jaron. So Jaron Walker. Yes. We were always friends, but it was more like, hey, how are you? Like, we saw each other at the track, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but we got, um, we became really close when I worked at D-Sport. Yes. And um, we're even closer now that we both left D-Sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we talk frequently. Yeah, shout out to Jaren. Yeah. Jaren uh, worked at D-Sport for many years. Yes. He's a, a a car guy through and through, Honda, mm-hmm. uh, drag racing. Right, right. Then he had his uh, Nissan. But um, now he's at Eibach. He's at Eibach now, right? yeah. Jaren yeah, is like great. a, a seven-foot-three black dude uh, <laughs> who's just like, you know. Oh, and, and a lot of people would know him from... Well, yes, all of those things we just mentioned, but also Wrench Mob. Yes, he is right? Wrench Mob. Yeah. So Wrench Mob, which we'll talk about that more later. Right. But so, yeah, so um, maintain friendships with Jaren. But, um, you know, I got a chance. I met Troy Miyamoto there. Yes. And um, that dude, like, it's so cool that we we still talk very frequently. Okay. Um, but he taught me a lot. He taught me a ton about sales and the industry. And, and that's a dude that it's like, it, I'm glad that we cross paths and that we continue to still where is have he a friendship. So I'm not, you know what? I don't know where Troy is. Um, I haven't talked to him in a while. Okay. But I will tell you, shortly after D-Sport, I went to um, another job outside of the industry. And then I went back into the industry with Classic Auto Show. And I remember I went down to Barrett Jackson for the first time. Okay. And Troy and I t- texted each other back and forth all day. Just yeah. Just catching up and talking and teaching, still teaching. This guy teaches a ton. And um, I'm very uh, thankful for the friendship that I had established while at D-Sport. Yeah. You know, I, I, I picked up a lot of friends. And, and so I had a good time there. So um, we've, we've now covered late mid to late 90s -hmm. and we're now all the way to what year did you start at the classic auto show 
Um, that was about two years ago. Okay, so you guys, for those of you that uh, are um, longtime followers of myself, right? You guys saw it on the Instagram. Uh, there was an event called, as she just said, the Classic Auto Show. Mm -hmm. It had um, a lot of big people behind it, which is why it was able to to bring some of the the uh, most popular. Um, current automotive television reality television show yes. stars everyone from uh dave kindig mm -hmm. uh bogey from bogey's yes, garage uh her. wayne carini mm -hmm. i mean you guys are talking about these are the people right now and they were all there at yeah. the show so you have that realm and then you also had them being more open to working with um, a realm of the automotive culture mm -hmm. which has very slowly 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 been been gaining respect or at least recognition if we right. don't want to use the word respect let's use the word recognition over yes. the last not as as much as you would think for a long time no mm -hmm. like that was completely uh especially after uh the fast and the furious mm -hmm. franchise mm -hmm. of movies it was completely disregarded you know mm -hmm. so we i kind of fall back to what i was mentioning earlier about how we have this world of whether it be you're in the sub world of drag racing street racing you're in the world of maybe you were into time attack and and, and um scca uh you know right. auto crossing this whole time or you were into showing or all of the above that was part of our lives right but each of those worlds is part of a bubble of import drag racing, yeah. import show off, import, you know, world. And it was this tiny percentage, mm -hmm. right? So you have uh, the LA Auto Show, which is has nothing to do with that, right? Mm -hmm. It's all OE mm -hmm. type stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, well, um, you get to a point where... You know, you have this world of classics, restorations, hot rodding, etc., which is the this massive, yeah, this massive thing. world, right? And you end up uh, being a part of a show, mm -hmm. which obviously caters to that. I mean, those TV stars are doing classic cars mm -hmm. and hot rodding right. and restoration, and, and you end up being able to 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 some degree mm -hmm. helping them open up to yeah. acknowledging. The Japanese car yes. culture. Yeah. And it ends up being the Japanese classic car show mm -hmm. and myself that had the opportunity to curate about, this yeah. one section, yeah. one aisle indoor. They gave us an indoor spot, you guys, and we were able to to produce this row. Yeah. One row against the wall of one of the buildings at the classic auto show. Mm -hmm. And you have um, a panel up there of Wayne Carini. Bogey from Bogey's Garage. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, Dave Kindig and all of these megastars. Uh, Andy Leach from Cal Auto Creations. I mean, these are the pinnacle. Yeah. Right? And then they gave time on the stage yeah. to have someone represent and interview people for the car culture that we all right. love. Right, yeah. And I had the opportunity to yeah. do that because of you. Yes. And because of little other opportunities here and there that made that side of the automotive industry start to to feel like even if they didn't want to yeah. i feel like they realized they have to care yeah and i think that the we you guys did such a great job at curating what came in there that there i i walked around the show and i did hear people say they were very impressed with what was by the in. japanese showing oh yeah That's and that awesome. was it was really i mean i that was one of the things so i had been following the classic auto show they started i came in on their third year okay um the first two years they were out at the los angeles convention center and one of the girls that I had worked with at the LA Auto Show yeah. was behind it. Ah, okay. And so that's sort of how we connected. And she lived in Connecticut. And so when she came into LA, I naturally wanted to go see her. Yes. So I walked the show and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. Um, but when I went back the second year, I realized they're kind of missing a couple of things. Okay. So I started, you know, building a, a relationship with um, Classic Auto Show. And then that's sort of how I got on board for the third year. Yes. Um, and so that's sort of how we connected. But one of the things that I did notice is that there was a very, there was a big lack of um, Japanese culture within yes. this Classic Auto Show world. Um, and so that was sort of my personal thing was to try to bring that out a little bit more because I knew I had... The resources, yeah. I had people I could go the to. And so that's sure. sort of where you guys, where you came in. Yeah. And um, I love that you guys ran with it. And I, I got a lot of great feedback good, um, good, from good. everybody. So, yeah, it was a great, great ordeal um, in terms of having, 
you know, the Japanese culture getting involved yeah. with that. Yeah. I mean, think about when we were uh, growing up and mm-hmm. you would see, or let's not even talk about seeing, hearing about mm-hmm. this mega thing called the Barrett Jackson yeah. auction, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, yo, that's Barrett Jackson. Uh-huh. And then obviously there's other big ones like Meekum. Right. But like Barrett Jackson is still like the one, sure. right? Mm-hmm. And we would see on TV, you know, a Bel Air. A uh, 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 Packer, right. you know, uh, just crazy American classics, right? right? Um, and then now, yeah, right, we're seeing uh, Turbo Supras, yeah. NSX is one hundred and forty yep. grand, one hundred and ten grand, yeah. ITR sixty three, sixty seven thousand, mm-hmm. um, Datsuns, you know, and and just all of this stuff, and and then you're seeing um, Monterey Car Week, yeah, Pebble Beach, right, Concord de Elegance events, which are whether or not anyone wants to call a spade a spade, mm-hmm. those are definitely yes. good old boy club, yep. very, very well to do, mm-hmm. extremely particular, mm-hmm. wealthy car collectors. They wouldn't even have batted an eyelash right. at a Japanese car. Mm-hmm. It would have been literally scoffed at. Right. And so I got to um, to curate and judge mm-hmm. for a smaller Concord de Elegance event. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're talking about Japanese Automotive Invitational right. that Motor Trend Group does now yes. at pebble beach i yeah. mean that's yeah, yeah that, it's I pebble beach mm-hmm. we're talking about monterey car yeah. week yeah, yeah. you guys these are events that would never and i mean literally never have allowed right imports I of any type that. really yeah and now they are starting to become not just little segments but in in my opinion it is going to become a full-blown recurring mm-hmm. and and subsequently a a um uh, substantial uh part of and then just I don't know how many more years it'll take, but it right. will then just become part of the event. Yeah, I agree. And as as silly as that sounds, because, you know, for many of us, you guys don't really understand. You're talking about a world of people that are rooted in a lot of very old school uh, prejudices. Right. Right. Let's right. be honest. Yeah, a lot yeah. of stereotyping, prejudices and, and biases. Mm-hmm. And they would never have acknowledged. And the fact that you are seeing cars at Barrett, at Meekum, bring a trailer, is right. doing crazy numbers with mm-hmm. cars. Mm-hmm. And Monterey Car Week, Concord de Elegance events, having Japanese classes uh, judged and acknowledged. Right. That is a huge a deal. deal. Yeah, it's absolutely. a very big deal. Absolutely. And so it's we're talking about CRXs and EGs in yeah. 100 degrees in summer mm-hmm. at the Fontana Speedway, California Speedway. And mm-hmm. and fifteen eighteen years later, right? Crazy. We're seeing, uh, there's a CR. I think there's a CRX that just went for. No. I, you know what? I, I so I will tell you that the Integra, the white the white ITR that was out at Barrett Jackson. Were you there when that one there. went? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I remember walking around, and you know, I had to have an open mind because I came from imports. So, yeah. Like I had to really keep an open mind about understanding and learning you know, these new American cars and all of these things that I wasn't brought up on. Yeah. And so um, I remember kind of like cruising around and of course it caught my eye and I took photos of it. I sent it to all my buddies, you know, the zero four racing. I was like, Hey, check this out. And we're like ooing and gawing over it. And then I come home and they finally do the auction on it. Yeah. And I think it sold for like, I think it, I think it was 63, six. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Seven. And I was like, you guys, this is that car that, and it was a beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but sixty three thousand. Beautiful. I mean, you know what? It was really interesting. If I had a shitload of money, I would totally be out there buying cars too. I mean, of course, some, some lady bought a really old like Toyota Tacoma from the eighties. What? And, and I think she was so excited when yeah. she got it. I think she spent maybe twenty two thousand yeah. dollars on it. I mean, if you have that kind of money just yeah. laying around, yeah. I would totally be picking up cars at Barrett. Well, yeah. Yeah, but um, I would but yeah, I would was... probably try Auto Trader first. <laughs> I mean, but just the experience to be able to do oh, all yeah. that would be so cool. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I, it was very interesting for me to be. Able, I mean, I saw that. I mean, and everybody on on the import side was going nuts over this yeah. ITR. I mean, there, it's Jackson. a record. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was cool to actually see it before others did and talk about it with a bunch of buddies and stuff. But it, it, because of my experiences with in the automotive industry and. Getting paid to do that, yeah. it's, I've been pretty lucky. Who would have thought, right? It's really crazy how um, I've been landing these jobs. Do you guys, <laughs> I'm talking about how her brother had his black EG, I had my, my blue EG, you had the CRX, which was on the street at yeah. the time, uh, John's uh, uh, Integra, Integra yeah. Crotch's Integra, and oh, I gosh. remember times, you guys, back then, we would go places and nobody would ride with each other. Yeah, we all drove separately. We all That's drove you separately. You had to drive separately. So we would go to just a place and it would be a five-car 
Sarah like, Caravan. Crispy, crispy cream. Yeah. Because crispy cream had just come out. Like, the, the meat. That was the thing. <laughs> I see you go, you roll in all together, and there's like, it's so stupid. It was, it was the best. It was I mean, the way to do it. Now we look back and we're just like, wait, every one of us could have sat in one car. I know. But Why everyone wanted to drive. You want to drive your own car. Everyone wanted to drive. Yeah. And that, that was part of life, and we'd be having Thanksgiving dinner, and we'd be, it's like you keep looking out the window. Yeah, no one's going to steal, yeah. no one's going to steal a car yeah. from the driveway, right? right? right. But we keep, everyone wants to see the make car. Make sure um, they're still there. Yeah, yeah, make sure they're still there. Oh, you hear an exhaust, and you know no one's coming to Thanksgiving yeah, yeah, yeah. dinner, but you still want to <laughs> see the car drive by. Yeah, it yeah. was, that was, I mean, I, it's still like I that mean, to this to day. to this day, even if I'm having lunch out somewhere and I'm yeah. outside and I hear an exhaust I'll always check and see what is up yeah could I take that guy what's is going it, on out is there is it trouble is right. it a friend right. or I just want to appreciate yeah. a yeah. cool car yeah right and, and those are the three things right there that kind of comprised everything we did was is it trouble mm-hmm. right is it a friend or at the very least I want to see a cool car drive yeah. by yeah absolutely right? and we had a lot of fun um so you go from from you know all of these jobs, but but racing, mm-hmm. the CRX, yeah. was happening all of this time. Yes. Right? I mean, obviously, you'll have this downtime. This will explode. Right. We want to upgrade that. Like right. everyone else, right? Yeah. yeah. But you, so you're still racing. So I haven't raced um, since November of last year. Okay. So I raced. Um, Hot Rod had a celebration with In-N-Out out at Pomona right. last November. Right. Was it a cool and event? It was a really fucking cool event. Yeah. It wasn't just cool. It was fucking cool. It was awesome. Okay. Okay. And um, my husband was able to secure, at least for us, um, one tech card. But we were one of, I think, five imports at this mm-hmm. domestic mm-hmm, event. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And one, to be able to race at Pomona was huge. That yes. was a huge deal for us. I mean, yeah. we did it when we did, you know, street legals out there. And, you know, I'd race with NHRA. But um, to be able to go back and take our kids, that yeah. was a big deal. Yeah. I mean, it was such an amazing event. So um, I think they had maybe 250 cars, maybe a little bit more. It was yeah. a really great event. But I raced out there with my buddy Mike Skin. Yes. And out of all the years that we've known each other, uh, we've never raced each other. Oh. And so this was our, like, one opportunity. It was awesome. So um, I was in my all-motor. Yeah. CRX. He's in his Integra. Yeah. Um, turbo. Yeah. And we're talking. Yeah. And he's like, don't burn me down. I'm like, I got you. <laughs> and so, but you have to remember, we're coming in as the underdog. Yeah. And so we have to look professional. We can't be messing around on the light. Like, yep. we've got to show yeah. we know what we're doing. We're a professional team. And so he tells me, I'm not going to cut a good light. I said, I'm not cutting a good light either. But then, you know, our, like, banter goes, and he goes, but you know, this only happens, you know, once in a blue moon. And I said, all right, it feels good. I'm going to go for it. And he's like, all right. <laughs> but And we talked about it. Yeah. Like, I said, okay, you bump in first, and then I'll bump in. Yeah. And that way you can get your boost in. And once you're in, I'll bump in before, yeah. after, so we can go. Okay. Well, he bumped in already. So he already threw it off, which was fine. We were a little nervous. Yeah. But I will tell you, when I, you know, normally I have, like, I have you know, I'm nervous and I've yeah. got butterflies. And um, apparently when I got it after my burnout, John said he could hear me screaming because I was so excited. I was, I guess he could hear me screaming. Yeah. I didn't know anyone could hear me. So I'm looking, I'm looking at the straightaway and I'm like, this is the most amazing fucking view I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, there's people in the stands, like you're on Pomona Dragway. Yeah. It's awesome. So anyway, we ended up racing and it felt good. So I went, totally yeah. blew him off the light. <laughs> And so he's all, fuck. He's like, you said. And I, I know. It felt good. Yeah. So I ran a 9-4. Yeah. And he ran like an 8-8, eight, eight, maybe 8-6, eight, somewhere in there. Yeah. And um, the whole way, he's like, I could just see like the ass of your car. And I'm like, that's how it's always going to be, sir. <laughs> but eventually, you know. Of course. Turbo kicks in. That dude flew right past me. Yeah. Um, but it was the best experience. So that was the last time I raced was back in November. Um, we've kind of taken um, a backseat for racing right now. Yeah. John just started his own company with yes. Aged. So he's been building motors for people, uh-huh. um, which has been great. Um, you know, we've been focusing a little bit more on, you know, family and home and all yeah. that stuff. So it's just been really busy. But we are trying to make it out to Bakersfield this September for IFO. Yeah. So um, I am hoping to get back in the car again. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just... Just to play. At a bare minimum to have fun. Yeah, and it's always been like that. Yeah. I race in a turbo class, so even though I'm an all-motor car, yeah. I still have to race in the turbo class so that I have some kind of competition because yeah. um, there's not a lot of cars like mine out there anymore. Yeah, yeah. So Cliff has been really nice to let me race in the import class, in the um, 
uh, turbo class. So I get a race against Fatty and all those guys. But yeah. all those guys are running, you know, mid to low eights. Dude, Fatty's getting... He's moving. That's, he's, he's moving. He's moving. He just, you know, he just won in, in Washington. I know. That was and, awesome. He, they have a bounty out on him now. <laughs> and I told him, like, I'm coming after you, kid. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. all, bring it. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I love Fatty. So all the guys, they've been so supportive. Yeah, shout out to team. Fat Kid. Yeah. Um, so, okay. IFO, mm-hmm. Bakersfield, mm-hmm. right? But, I mean, you know, I want to I wanna touch on that real quick. Um, there was a two, there's a couple of points. So one, having that in and out event, which was um, with Motor Trend, mm-hmm. that's the type of event now it would take or did take for them to allow imports on the oh, track. Yeah. Because you guys, Pomona, LACR, that was the track until they banned imports. Right. Which to this day, all of us are like, that's some fucking bullshit <laughs> because of a sound ordinance. Yeah, so people ask me all the time, like, do you race out at Irwindale? And I'm like, I just don't, I don't think they'll let me because my car's so loud. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to put a muffler well, on uh, it. There's that, that much wear and tear on a car for an eighth mile. Yeah, it's not mm. ideal for me because it, it just isn't ideal. Um, it, it makes sense because it's so close. But, um, you know, I really want to get data for my quarter mile yeah, pass. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know. But being able to do that at the track that was, of course, Southern California's number one oh my gosh yeah and, and being able to do it in such a cool environment mm-hmm. but you know while this is all happening i kind of you know i want to reference john real quick so we've talked about you know that's your boyfriend then your husband you know race legal san diego mm-hmm. mutual friends uh you know him and your brother mike and mm-hmm. and and all this kind of stuff so while we've talked about your timeline it's been the same kind of thing for john except that you know, he had his Integra, but then he ended up pretty much dedicating himself to being like the crew chief. Yeah. So basically what ended up happening is, you know, um, Michael and, and John, I think John just finally realized like he enjoyed racing, but he said he really enjoyed making sure my car was up and running and then he enjoyed watching. Mm-hmm. And so it's really interesting because <coughs> it's been, um, we've been doing this forever and I'd say only in the last two or three years he finally told me that he gets really nervous when I'm on the starting line. And I had no idea. I thought it was only me. Um, and he says, every time you make a pass, it, it, I'm, I'm get like butterflies. So I remember there was an event sometime last year. And um, I think I was out at Bakersfield. And when I went through, I think it was pulling to the right a little bit. Uh-huh. Now, I felt very comfortable with where I was. Yeah. But he said, he's like, you were super close to the wall. Okay. You need to be more careful. And I was like, I got it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So then the next pass, I went into the other lane. And I think there was like something on the top. And so I got a little squirrely. <laughs> and the first thing he told me is, you made my butthole pucker up. <laughs> Can you not do that? And I said, honey, I got it. Yeah. But, you know, he, he was really, he was worried. And so that, I, I didn't know he gets these emotions when yeah. I'm on the truck. Um, but, you know, I'm really confident with, the way the car has been built. Yeah. I'm very prepared um, to crash. I feel like I will be safe. Yeah. Um, I trust everyone that put or work into that car. Yeah. Um, we have all the safety that we could have. So sure. I'm not too worried about that part. Um, but I didn't realize that he gets so worried. Yeah, but I mean, but that shows you that after how many years of doing it, how many times of himself and yes. then watching you go down, yeah. it never gets old, no. right? So him kind of deciding that he wanted to focus more on making your car mm-hmm. safe. And subsequently, we get to this point now where... Obviously, he's been the one who's worked on your yeah, car and built it, but now he decided to start his own thing. Yeah. Right? So, so let's kind he, of touch on Aged real yeah, quick. Yeah. So Aged is, it's AG Engine Development. Yeah. Um, short for Aged, which people love because everyone thinks we're super old and we're not. But yeah. I guess we are. I don't know. So it's like a perfect thing. Um, so, you know, Aged has been taken off. And so he's been working on um, building case your motors for some of these like dune buggies that are going out yep, racing yep. out there so that's yep. been a big deal for him um and he's been doing great and then just you know word of mouth people are kind of reaching out to him to put together a couple motors for him here and there so we've really kind of focused more on him trying to get that off the ground mm-hmm. which has been really successful so far um and sort of just letting the crx wait a little bit which is fine yeah um but i did ask him i was like when can we roll this little baby out and yeah. start her up so i think he said maybe this weekend yeah he's gonna start dabbling on it a little bit more but you know we've just been doing the family thing which we love and the kids come with us yeah um they which has been awesome because everybody brings their kids so if you come to our pit for sure, there's yeah. like 10 kids running yeah, around. Yeah, kids and it's little awesome. bikes and skateboards yeah. and, and but just... But it's great. I mean... It's so cool. It's just become... I mean, and it's not just us. I mean, there's all kinds of 
guys out there that are bringing their family. I mean, Jason Park brings his kids, Sammy, but I mean, all but that's guys. what I'm saying though. Like, like, like I said, whether it be one realm or another, mm -hmm. it, it, this is a realm yes. of culture and community mm -hmm. where you got people who've been drag racing for decades, yeah. right? It's just part of who we yeah. are. Yeah. And and then you ended up getting jobs in other fields, but right. it's cars. Cars are yeah, life. It's always been my thing that's brought me back in. Yeah. And so, um, you know, when I left automotive industry, I was really sad. I yeah. was very sad, but I knew that racing was going to keep me involved. So, so that was good. Yeah. Um, and then I had the chance to go back with Classic Auto Show and I yeah. took it. Um, yeah, but even not even working in it, you open the garage and there's K-Series. Oh my God. There's, and, there's so and, much. and parts and, and the, the CRX, you know? I know. And I you got to love it because you look in there and you're like, that's the car I've had since day one. I know. It is the car I've had since day one. That is amazing. Yeah, it is. It's a cool story. Okay. So, okay. So I want people to be able to find you and be able to see some of these yeah. The progression of things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so where can people find you on social media? Uh, so my Instagram is K20Panai. It's K20. Yeah. P as in Paul, I, N as in Nancy, A, Y. K20Panai. Are you <laughs> laughing at me? Sometimes people can't understand what I'm saying. No. <laughs> okay, for, for all of you guys who, who wouldn't necessarily know what any of that meant, that is exactly how you would say it so somebody would be able to write it down. Well, I don't know. Right? If you guys are <laughs> listening and you want to go back, uh, I'll put it in the captions on Instagram, <laughs> on YouTube, etc. But uh, it just makes me laugh because K20 Penai is basically like an AOL insta uh, instant yeah, messenger okay, screen well, name. Right? Because it's like, I mean, we all know what a K20 is, but Penai is like, you know, I'm Filipino. And and well, so it's, it's just kind of a funny thing. Go ahead. It's funny because back in the day, I was B16 Panay. Yep. Because I had a B16. You had a B16. So it just naturally made sense. I know I'm so old dating myself no. by saying that I have that. But K20 we all had Panay B's. is my... Yeah, like nobody... I mean, it's a, I K is such a normal thing now. It is. But we've been in it and around it long enough right. where it's like... Nobody even knew it. That didn't, first of all, they didn't exist yet. Right. So it, it's like for some people, it's like, what do you mean? You could have just manned up and bought. There was a time, you guys, that K-Series yeah. engines hadn't even come into existence right. yet. Right. Everyone had a B16. Mm -hmm. And if you had a B16, you wanted like a YSO1 transmission. Right, 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 and right. if you could, you know, like there was, that was the truth, man. Yeah, there was a time when I had the B16 before K came out. We were talking about maybe even going like to a GSR or yep, something yeah, else, yep. just a little bit more power because that's what everybody was running. Right. And then K-Series came out yeah. and it was like, hey, we can come up on this K-Series. A couple and of just, people stayed LS yeah, VTEC and tried to make did. it work. Mm -hmm. B20 VTECs, yep, yep. Uh, H22s, mm -hmm. a couple. Yeah. But then K, K segued into, because dude, the first K-Swaps were so expensive. They were. And again, it didn't It didn't just like bolt in. You had For to have sure. a certain bolt. You For sure. You had to have everything like modified. And so it was just, it was, you know, well, people didn't day, even have expensive. mounts yet. People yep. were welding to the yep. chassis, mm -hmm, whatever mm -hmm. they could do to get it in yeah, there. Yeah, and that's where Steen Chassis came in. Yeah. That dude was brilliant, that kid. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was great. Yeah, so we were very excited to be included in one of those first, like, K-series, CRSs yeah. and stuff. But, you know, now everyone's running Ks. It's the thing to do. Sure, so. sure. But, I mean, people are... are are being able to pull one, two, five, ten more right, horsepower, right. and all motor, they're making crazy numbers. Yeah, yeah all motor is crazy. Crazy, crazy. I mean, can you tell us how much your motor is making? I'm like 400 and something 30 maybe somewhere in there fourth you guys well, 430 but, all motor yes all motor <laughs> so <laughs> that's so nasty wheels, yeah i mean i've heard the car i know it sounds crazy mm -hmm. i've seen it on the dyno i've been with you guys yeah, that's right yeah. yeah i mean but i mean like like you know i had always been all motor before too and i had never pursued any form of like drag racing career yeah but i mean everyone of course wanted to make more power right, right, right. and then you know my newest build is is turbocharged mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now like I don't ever necessarily see myself I not know. turbocharging. Right, right. But the sound of a high revving, like big displacement, yes. all motor yes. car is just as intoxicating I as know, the sound it. of a spooling turbo and a blow right. off. I love it. Well, and I, I kind of do like best of both worlds just because my daily is the WRX. Yeah. And D Sport had built that for me um, back in the day when I was when I was working there. Yeah. And it was it's a fun car. I love it. It's a great. I mean, all wheel drive turbo is going to have but, a whole you know, different got feel to it. Four wheel. It's got four wheel. It's got four doors. So it's yeah. perfect for the kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I kind of get both the best of both worlds. Sure. 
Um, but you know, I do love my all motor and I think a lot of it is just because it takes so much more to get the horsepower out of it. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, the things that John knows and what we've learned over time, it's just been phenomenal and yeah. he's just so great with what he does. And he's self-taught. He's, oh yeah. yeah. That's the thing I love he, about John is it's 100% right. passion based, mm-hmm. but with, I always talk about this. It's to people who listen to every episode, it probably honestly sounds fairly redundant, mm. but I always talk about how everyone loves to say that mm-hmm. passion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's like the word, right? Right. It doesn't mean a fucking thing without hard work. <laughs> right. 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 It right. doesn't mean everyone's like, I'm going to find something I love. I'm going to be passionate. You can be as passionate <laughs> as you want in front of a computer all day. Yeah, yeah. You can be as passionate as you want watching mm-hmm. people on YouTube vlog mm-hmm. about their life. How about you get the fuck up? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And go do something. You're going to blow it up. You're going to cross thread something. Mm-hmm. You're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. You're going to break an axle. Yeah. You're going to do all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. But stop watching other people do yeah, it. You got to do it. And you just got to go do it. Yeah. And that's the one thing with John is that he learned so much and, and he we've been really fortunate because we still stay in contact with a lot of the ogs Mm -hmm. and there is a lot of discussion john has a lot of discussions about well what about this and what about that and these guys will tell him well we tried that back in the day and this is what happened and smart smart dude yeah he's been really fortunate to to learn a lot We've, we've done a ton of trial and error yeah and i mean when you think about like our setup it's so basic it's so old school yeah um, but it works. And we've tried to like move into something more like new, new technology, okay. things like that. And we just, it, it just, it works what we're doing. It works. So, you know, like everybody, and I know a lot of all-motor cars have tapped into that eight second already. You know, Norris has done it. Jeremy has done it. Um, we're still trying to tap into that yeah. 899, you know, Skunk's trying to work on it. Um, and a lot of people will say like it's already being done back east, but a lot of those guys are running on nitro, mm-hmm. and so it's it's this weird like I'm glad that they have this new respective like class for the all motor outlaw uh-huh. class, mm-hmm. which I think is great. <clears throat> I mean, it's nuts what these guys are doing. Oh yeah, and it's it's awesome. I don't want to take that from them at all, but we are still trying to see what we can do and bring down our number without having to do the nitro. And we yes. just honestly we just couldn't do it. There's just financially we couldn't yeah. do it. There's so many things. I mean, you're you, self funded, and we are self funded, but it's also so with nitro like there's so much more you, it's a ton of trial and error yeah and we just don't have that yeah. so we're just you know we're just doing our thing and just trucking along and just having fun and letting the kids be there and that's what it's always been about yes it's not always about like winning of course you always want to win yeah but it's really about spending that time with everybody yeah. and um it's it's just been great and so we've just we just Keep going at it. You know what? I mean, as much as I, I didn't end up doing it um, as much as you guys, but the times I've come mm-hmm. recently. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, kids are riding their skateboards mm-hmm. or bikes around or somebody's on a, what do you call the little hoverboard little, things the when that was in? Or yeah, and scooters and mm-hmm. razors. And somebody's got the little hibachi mm-hmm. and everyone's got beers. Yeah. And yeah. as much as everyone quadruples checks for the right tools and extra parts, yeah. they check for the beer. Yes. Right? You got to yes. have the beers. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's just a, it's just people in lawn chairs. Yeah. In between heats and, and just not, having a blast. It's and not, I loved it's it. I've always loved it. Everybody doing it. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's really interesting. So when I race, I usually don't eat because usually I've been in the same stupid fire suit yeah. for like 10 plus years. I've okay, never so had that to doesn't have an expiration date? Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My Hans device does. Yes. Um, but. So I, it's an expensive suit. So oh, like yeah. I've always had to wear it. So that yeah. means like my weight has to maintain. Yeah. So typically what happens is I'm always like, I have a race day in five days. I need to shed like five pounds. So oh, what ends up I happening see. is I don't eat because I'm not sure if that little zipper is going to go up. Yeah, but that's not healthy in the long It's not, but this is how my life is. And so what, what ends up happening you is... You have produced I two children. I, I have. Yeah. But you know, I got to stay in the stupid fire suit and I've been in it. So anyway, I don't eat. But what I do look forward to is once I'm done, so whenever I get eliminated or I continue to win, yeah. I'm very happy because I'm yes. like, I'm either winning yeah. or finally I get to eat. But the one thing that I always look forward to, I mean, I love the racing. I really do. But the thing that I love is to be able to like, once I've done and I've raced, is to go and hang out with people and like socialize and like catch up and yeah. discuss what happened. at the and That's the part that I'm always like, this is the best part. I mean... I love the racing part. That part's always super cool. Yeah. But the part that I'm always, I look forward to is like the aftermath. The camaraderie. So like, yeah. So for like zero four in our team, whenever you win, 
you usually treat everybody to lo and behold del taco it's the i hate that place <laughs> i remember i won once and they're like we're going to del taco and i'm like that's what we're eating it's so nasty <laughs> But we do it as a team, okay. and everybody goes, and it's like the best thing, and you you end up treating for everybody. It's just the thing that we do, and it's across the board. Everybody does it, but th- those are the things that like I love that we get to it, do. It's as a family, team. it's community, it's, totally about it's that. fun, and yes, it's competitive. I always yeah. say this: yes, there's a competitive nature to right. things, but if you're not having fun, right. you're missing the point. Yeah, and yeah. You, and you you guys have had fun mm-hmm. while competing, yeah. while working to to win and beat right. even your friends. Right, but it doesn't have to be this claws out vile hate your guts right it's competitive but it's still family yeah it's still fun right okay so k20 pinai yeah right instagram is instagram the best way for people to reach you that or facebook and that's just googling my name yeah i yeah i haven't had facebook in like seven years but okay so all the kid kids all the cool kids are doing it (laughs) are they i don't know okay (laughs) so let's do instagram so uh like i said guys for those of you listening on youtube uh we will uh put it in the caption and uh, uh, same thing with Instagram. I do a post for every one of these episodes uh, with a, a color code and the episode number. And I'll have all of that uh, there for you guys. You guys can click and go to her Instagram. Community conversations. Yes. Right? Which, I mean, this is the epitome of that. It's a conversation with not just a member of, of the community, our community, mm-hmm. my community. But you're, you're, you've are you're been like my sister for... I know. For, it's so cool. It's, it's the best. And uh, like I said, we learn about you guys both myself and you guys uh, some of these stories i had never heard before or i didn't remember parts <laughs> of them so we learn uh we learn not just from somebody but we learn about somebody and we get to put those two things together and and grow as a community so yep. i appreciate you of course it thank was awesome. you for being a part of it and uh thank you for having me absolutely you guys think bigger po- uh, project think bigger podcast you can go to the website uh this is available on various platforms but uh, all I ask is if you appreciate what you heard, share it, and uh, let's continue to grow together. Okay? Thank you, guys. God bless you all. Bye.